Well, another year, another Google I.O. And this one's a big one. From mid-tier phones to first-time products, we've got a lot of ground to cover. So let's get into it. Kicking off the keynote, Google showed off the many ways they are taking advantage of AI to enhance their apps and services. For example, you'll soon be able to use AI in Gmail to create replies based on emails you receive. In Maps, the company is introducing Immersive View for Routes, which can visualize the journey on your way to your destination. And it can even visualize what the weather and traffic conditions are going to be like on the way to work, the park, or wherever you're going, which is pretty neat. Google has also announced a slew of new additions to the Photos app, but the highlight feature has to be the Magic Editor, which can do everything from removing a bag strap off a person's body, repositioning people within a frame, and the feature can even recreate objects that were cut off in the original photo. And if you want, you can even use Magic Editor to change the sky, which in turn changes the lighting in the photo. Now that's crazy. Besides those three services, Google has also shared some exciting updates to its AI language models, its ChatGPT competitor known as Bard, and they've also shown some AI integrations coming to the Google Workspace. And on the Android side of things, Google has also showcased some AI generative wallpapers. And coming soon, you'll have the ability to make wallpapers out of emojis. You'll also be able to create a 3D image out of a regular photo to make what Google calls cinematic wallpapers. And you'll also be able to generate your own wallpapers based on prompts that you input, helping your phone feel more one of a kind. All right, I know I'm just speed running through all the software and AI announcements from I.O., but if you actually want to learn more, then be sure to check out our full coverage on AndroidAuthority.com. All right, AI and software aside, let's get into some hardware announcements. To start, Google has finally announced the Pixel 7a, the latest from the company's A-series line of mid-tier phones. With the Pixel 7a, we're seeing a slew of upgrades and improvements. For starters, the design of the 7a takes a lot of its inspiration from the Pixel 7 and 7 Pro. However, the 7a comes into the Pixel lineup as the smallest of the three. On the front, you get a 6.1 inch FHD plus OLED display, and it now has a 90 hertz refresh rate. This is a welcome change from its predecessor, which required some modding in order to unlock said refresh rate. The panel also boasts a 25% higher peak brightness than the 6a, and it is now protected by Gorilla Glass 3. Inside of the device, we've also upgraded to the Tensor G2 processor, which should address some of the overheating and performance issues that were commonplace with the Pixel 6, 6 Pro, and 6a. Another major change can be found in the phone's camera array. Instead of inheriting the 12.2 megapixel image sensor from previous A-series phones, the Pixel 7a now features a new 64 megapixel main camera, capable of shooting 4K video at up to 60 frames per second. The ultra-wide camera also sees a slight improvement as well, going from 12 megapixels on the 6a to 13 megapixels on the 7a, and it can record up to 4K at 30 frames per second. Unfortunately, one big drawback to the new phone has to be its battery, which is smaller than what's found on both the Pixel 5a and 6a. We're not sure why Google has decided to further compromise on the battery life, considering that the Pixel 6a was already such a battery hog. Fortunately, one of the redeeming factors of the Pixel 7a is that it now offers wireless charging, though it is limited to a slow 7.5 watt charging rate. As for software, the Pixel 7a will, of course, come with Android 13 pre-installed, and you'll get most of the Pixel UI exclusive software and camera features, like face unblur, call screening, hold for me, the Google Recorder app, and many more. Although one notable omission, however, will be cinematic blur, which will not be coming to the 7a. And when it comes to long-term support, the Pixel 7a comes with three years of software updates and up to five years of security patches. In regards to availability, the Pixel 7a will only be available in one configuration for $499 US dollars. The phone will be available on the Google Store starting May 10, and will come in a variety of colors, including charcoal, snow, and sea. They'll also come in coral, though you can only get this through the Google Store in certain countries, and unfortunately, that does not include India. That was my attempt. Hope you enjoyed that one. <laughs> So on paper, it seems like the Pixel 7a is an overall improvement over its predecessor, minus the battery and charging speeds. But if you want to learn more about the 7a and how it performs in daily use, two of Android Authority's Ryans actually tested the phone. So make sure to go check that out after this video. Now, if the $499 price tag is still too much for you, well, you're in luck. Thanks to the launch of the Pixel 7a, the Pixel 6a will be dropping to $349 US dollars. So if you've been eyeing that phone for a while, and you don't need any of the features of the 7a, then now is the time to add the Pixel 6a to your cart and check out. 
Obligatory A-Series news aside, after years of rumors and speculation, Google has finally announced their first ever foldable. Now, according to Google, current foldables have quite a few flaws. They're either too thick, the software doesn't maximize the form factor, or the camera quality isn't up to par. But Google is hoping to have the answer to all those shortcomings with the Pixel Fold. Starting with the design, Google claims that the Pixel Fold is the thinnest foldable on the market, at least where the Pixel Fold is sold. In fact, the device is just half an inch thick when folded, not including the camera bump. The phone also boasts a very similar design language inspired by the Pixel 7 series. In terms of durability, the Pixel Fold features an IPX8 waterproof build and comes with a fluid friction hinge. Google says that the hinge has been tested for 200,000 folds, which is the same as Samsung's claim for the Galaxy Z Fold 4. The Pixel Fold's hinge is also strong enough to stay open at any angle, which is great when you want to use the foldable like a laptop in tabletop mode. Looking at the displays, the Pixel Fold sports a 5.8 inch, 120 hertz exterior display protected by Gorilla Glass Victus. On the inside, you'll find a 7.6 inch, 120 hertz ultra thin glass OLED display with an aspect ratio of six to five. And with this bigger display comes a bunch of new software enhancements tailored to the foldable experience. And according to the announcement, the Pixel Fold will come with over 50 Google apps that are optimized for the larger screen. And some of these apps will be Pixel first and won't arrive on other large screen devices until later. Sorry, Samsung. Google has also said that they've been working with developers to optimize third-party apps for their large screen devices. Although it's gonna take some convincing on Google's part to get developers to dedicate extra time and resources to make this a reality. So based on what was announced, we've got a slim design and the promise of optimized software. Now onto the cameras. Apparently Google is touting that the Pixel Fold has the best camera system on a foldable based on a third-party report. The Pixel Fold's rear camera system is composed of a 48 megapixel main shooter, 10.8 megapixel ultra wide camera, and 10.8 megapixel telephoto camera. You'll also get a 9.5 megapixel front facing camera and an eight megapixel selfie shooter for when you wanna take your video calls on the big screen. And because this is a Pixel device, you do of course get access to Pixel exclusive features, including Night Sight, Magic Eraser, Face and Photo on Blur, and up to 20 times super res zoom. Rounding off the highlight specs, the Pixel Fold is powered by the Tensor G2 processor and will come with 12 gigabytes of memory. It will also have a 4,821 milliamp hour battery, which Google claims will easily last you over 24 hours. And when you do need to charge, the phone supports 21 watt wired charging or 7.5 watt wireless charging. Now, if you're dying to get your hands on this device, you'll actually need to brace yourself because since this is Google's first foldable, they're limiting sales of the device to the US, UK, Germany, and Japan. So no love to the US's neighbors up north, sadly. The Pixel Fold will be available in obsidian and porcelain, or black and white, and will come at a starting price of 1,799 US dollars, the same price you'd pay for the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 4. The base model will come with 256 gigabytes of storage, but you can also upgrade to 512 gigabytes for an extra $120. Pre-orders are gonna start today, May 10, and it will be released soon after. Now the Pixel Fold isn't Google's only first time product this year. The company has also announced the long-awaited Pixel tablet, which was teased during last year's event. Google has combined their expertise from creating Pixel phones and smart home devices in order to create a tablet specifically designed for the home. And at first glance, the Pixel tablet honestly just looks like a grown-up, detachable Nest Hub. The tablet itself sports an aluminum enclosure and a nano-ceramic coating inspired by porcelain. The 11-inch 60Hz LCD display will support any stylus that meets the USI 2.0 standard, and the tablet will support third-party keyboards. Although surprisingly, Google has no plans to announce a first-party keyboard, folio, or stylus. Maybe this will be announced in the future? Who knows? But back to the things we do know. The Pixel tablet will be powered by the Tensor G2 processor, and Google claims that with their chipset, you'll be able to unlock the best Google Meet video calling experience in any tablet complete with better computational imaging for clear video calls, lighting adjustments, autofocus, and stay in frame features. When it comes to battery, the Pixel tablet features a 7,020 milliamp hour battery, which translates to roughly 12 hours of 1080p video streaming. And in order to increase battery longevity, the tablet will only charge up to 90% of its capacity. Though you do have the option to override this every time you charge via the USB-C cable or the dock. Speaking of which, the Pixel tablet comes with a charging speaker dock accessory. 
Not only does this dock allow you to charge the tablet, but it also offers more powerful speakers than what's built into the tablet. And when you dock the Pixel tablet, this enables a so-called hub mode. This basically turns your tablet into a Nest Hub smart display of sorts, enabling digital photo frame functionality, the ability to use the Google Assistant without unlocking the tablet first, and a persistent home panel for smart controls. You can even cast content from your phone to the dock tablet, just like you would with a Nest Hub. The Pixel tablet will be available to buy in Australia, Canada, Europe, Japan, the UK, and the US. And in terms of colors, you'll be able to get the tablet in hazel, porcelain, or rose, though some colors won't be available in certain areas. For the base model Pixel tablet, which does come with a dock accessory, it'll run you around 499 US dollars, or more if you choose to upgrade the storage from 128 gigabytes to 256 gigabytes. Now, if you want, you can buy an extra charging dock for 129 US dollars or a kickstand case for $79. But please note that you actually cannot get the tablet on its own. So if you're thinking of saving some cash by ditching the dock, well, sorry to burst your bubble there. Pre-orders will start May 10, with general availability sometime soon after. And that about rounds up all the announcements from Google I.O. 2023. Well, what do you think of the new products that were just announced? Are you thinking of buying any of them? Let us know in the comments down below. While you're down there, be sure to like, subscribe, hit the bell icon to be notified of when we upload next. I'm Harley Miranda with Android Authority, and I will see you in the next one.